Thank you, Francis, for the uh, introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be back in Belfast. Um, I'd like to thank the Chamber for the opportunity to speak to you today, uh, especially Francis and uh, Vice President uh, Mark Nodder, my good friend, a member of my working group, uh, Dr. Bro McFarren, I think you're here somewhere, um, who runs one of the finest American companies, Allstate, uh, Anne McGregor, uh, thank you as well for your work. And I'd also like to recognize the many members of my working group who are here today, too many to mention. Finally, I'd also like to thank uh, Colm O'Neill, um, who on previous occasions has also sponsored events that enable us to talk to the business community. So I'd like to thank BT for enabling that to happen, on not just today, but many other occasions in the past. What I want to talk to you about today is to try and focus a little on you. A lot of the conversation in Northern Ireland over the last decades, certainly over the last couple of years, has been on the connectivity between the effects of what happens in the political arena and what happens in the private sector. And I like to think that as a community in this place, Northern Ireland has moved on so that by and large, in the main, we can now focus on normalized conversation about business issues that affect this community as it plans for the next decade or decades. And I think it's time to talk about some realities as to what that means for 2011 and what it means for the years ahead. I think the Northern Ireland economy today <coughs> excuse me, finds itself at a tipping point. If pushed in the right direction, it'll keep moving forward. A tip in the wrong direction, and it may stumble. I'm here to tell you that at this critical moment, as we face into the difficult, turbulent, and unchartered 2011, you, the leaders of business in Northern Ireland, most likely hold that delicate balance in the palms of your hands. The question is, do you realize it? Everyone, myself included, as well as the leaders of the Northern Ireland government, are working very hard to keep Northern Ireland moving forward in competition with the rest of the world. But I think we also need to confront, confront some realities if we want to make sure we don't look back in this period as a lost opportunity, not just as a period of tumult and crisis. You are living through, at this moment, possibly the greatest opportunity you're ever going to see in your lives and business. But I'm sure to you it doesn't feel that way. As members of this business community, you know that 2011 is going to be a very challenging year. But it probably won't be as challenging as 2010, 2009, or 2008. Economic conditions persist here and around the world that are very difficult. But ask yourselves, in the midst of all this inevitable doom and gloom, every time I'm interviewed in this place, or any meeting I have, every conversation starts with a negative. Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? When is it going to get better? Why is it so bad? All of these things, all of which I understand. But in the midst of all of this doom and gloom, ask yourselves if you're really spending enough time together focusing on the fact that at this time in the world where many nations are struggling to compete, you have some of the greatest advantages anyone could ever hope to possess. Or ask yourself a different question. If you can't take advantage of them at this time, when they're at their peak, when will you be able to do so? You've heard me say this before, but 2010, again, it may not feel like this to you. But 2010 was actually a banner year for Northern Ireland. It's important to remember this so you don't lose sight of the facts, and I urge you to keep them in sharp focus as you have this conversation amongst yourselves. In 2010, we witnessed a major political achievement in the devolution of policing and justice. It sent a clear message to the rest of the world about stability in this place and signaled that the region is open for business now and in the future. The more time that passes between now and that decision, the more confident we all become that the world is able to take notice even more. 2010 brought the UK City of Culture to Derry, Londonderry. We worked really hard to make that happen. It can and must become a transformative moment, not just for Derry, Londonderry, but for everybody in this room. If you miss this opportunity, it will never, ever come again. 
It will be a case of shame on you and shame on us. Last year, many US companies voted with their feet and their checkbooks to come to Northern Ireland. GE, Seagate, Terex, Dow Chemical, Citibank, 500 jobs in October, November. They all announced they're creating new jobs in Northern Ireland at a time when many other places around the world would have begged, borrowed, and stole for that opportunity. On a per capita basis, these are the facts. Doesn't matter what you read in the newspapers, these are the facts. On a per capita basis, Northern Ireland's performance was better than almost every location around the world. Something that also gets lost in the analysis all too often. The United States, I hope you'll agree, has tried to play its part to help maintain this momentum. And our partnership with your government could not be stronger, and I want to underline that. We see it at another vantage point. We see what your politicians, elected representatives, and members of the uh, public sector organizations such as I and I do every day to try and represent Northern Ireland to the best of its ability. They do not get the credit they deserve. But that will never be enough in and of itself. Anything I can do, the US government can do, or the Northern Ireland administration can do, will not be enough to take advantage of what I'm talking about, or what you just talked about, Francis, in your speech, all of which I agree with. Real growth in a region of this size and profile must be driven by the private sector. The time for insular thinking in Northern Ireland has come to an end. It has to be over, and the time is now. The profile of this economy has got to become more private sector driven as a matter of urgency, not because of economic crisis, but because of the unbelievable opportunity that stands in front of you if you can only grasp it, and if we can grasp it together. Irrespective of who is in government or how hard they work, political leaders can only make so much change happen so quickly, especially in a place where the very institutions of government are as new as they are in Northern Ireland. So my message is simple. Our governments collectively are doing whatever they can to help moving forward in a difficult situation. I just came from a meeting with Owen Paterson where we talked about this very topic. But history all over the world, and I challenge you to find me a place where this is not true, has shown that long-term growth and seismic change in economic profiles of the magnitude we'd like to see happen in Northern Ireland can only take place when the private sector plays a pivotal and dominant leadership role that moves ahead of politics, moves ahead of decisions that can enable that growth to happen through political change, and makes that change happen rather than waits for it to happen to them. When you combine this with the natural cultural bias in Northern Ireland towards entrepreneurship, I think after Greece, Northern Ireland has the highest per capita rate of entrepreneurship in the world. Think about that. And add to that the multiple economic advantages that exist for Northern Ireland globally at this time from an FDI perspective. It will be a huge missed opportunity if we don't make this happen. Let's try and remember for a second what those advantages are. You've got one of, if not the lowest, depending on who frames the argument, operating costs in Europe. On a joined up, all-inclusive basis, you're vastly more competitive than the Republic becoming more so by the day, undeniably more competitive than mainland UK and all of the rest of Europe. You've got, I think, the youngest workforce and uh, workforce under the age of 25 in all of Europe. You've got incredible talents that exist and sit inside of that workforce that bear the stamp of all the entrepreneurship I spoke about in Northern Ireland. Through the good work of INI and the foresight of your government, you're developing skills in sectors that drive future economic growth. You are currently dominating your activity in the areas that are driving the world's economies today. I spend my life in these economies. I go from here today to Davos and Zurich tomorrow, where the leaders of all the world's developed economies and the leaders of all the major Fortune 500 companies in the world will be meeting. And I'll be there for three days meeting with them on behalf of Northern Ireland. These people are in these four areas that you are in today, where you're putting your investment dollars or pounds at this moment. Financial services, technology, 
creative media and business services. You're already there. Your government programs are set up to defend and support these things. Your inward investment targeted dollars are targeted towards companies that are coming into that area. Your institutions, UU and Queen's University, two of the finest universities in the world, are educating students so that they're ready for those opportunities. Your skills assurance program is designed to create skills programs that will train people in advance before they come to work for those companies who are interested in being in those areas. You produce 2,000 business graduates a year and over 1,000 ICT graduates. You've got Project Kelvin, the fastest broadband connectivity with North America from all of Western Europe. And the biggest advantage which many people in this room saw when they attended the working group meetings that I've held here and in America and also the conference that we had in Washington was that companies want to come here if possible. They understand it's a special place. They understand that you're regenerating. You're entering a period of renewal on so many levels. They want you to succeed. If I could go and do this job for any other country in the world, and I could walk in with those six support legs under my stool, every government, every people, every workforce, every business organization would say, how can we fail? Too often in Northern Ireland, we talk amongst ourselves about how can we make it happen and who's going to do it for us. That's got to end, my friends. Companies invest because of the pro-business attitude and corporate culture that resonates with global companies. More than anything else, you need to bet on your young people. It's time to start taking advantage of your position. You have to be able to take risks. You have to have the courage to take those risks. Increase hiring. Bet on your young people. Bet on your culture. Bet on the things that sustained you for 35 years when nobody wanted to come here at all. Believe in the opportunity because it's there for you if you want it. If you don't, it's going to pass you by in the click of a finger. And I promise you that. And it's happening as we sit here today, right now. Last October at this conference in Washington, we worked for over a year to bring people into the room that we really knew would listen. They may not write a check today or tomorrow, but they listened. Some of them already wrote a check. Citibank, 500 more jobs in October. Invest in I did all that work. It had nothing to do with me. But they voted in favor of Northern Ireland. And there will be more. There was $1 trillion of investment in that room that day. CEOs, many of them from Fortune 500 companies, talked about their positive experiences here. People like Tom Wilson, who runs Allstate. He went to Washington for a day. Steve Lusso, who runs Seagate, he went to Washington for a day. Several others I could mention. These guys run multi-billion dollar companies. They don't have time to eat lunch. But they went to Washington, spent a day persuading other companies to come here and listen to what we have to say. That's who you have supporting you. No other place in the world has this. But it's going to go away eventually because people will get tired of saying the same old thing. Goodwill only lasts so long. The executives there emphasized that the thing that impressed them most was the young people. Your universities are producing incredible graduates. I see it myself. I'm going to speak to 300 of them at University of Ulster this afternoon to beg them to stay in Northern Ireland, to think about what the opportunity is here. They emphasized that engineering, math, and science students that they had hired, in particular, were amongst the best they'd ever worked with anywhere in the world. The combination of these factors, in my opinion, creates a unique business environment and quality location that cannot easily be replicated anywhere else in the world. It is an opportunity we must leverage.